Today we're taking a look at the ATN Excite 4K Pro. Let's get right into the first 30 second breakdown. That's from the first 30 seconds, give or take, I give you guys my exact thoughts on this product before we get into the full review. That way you can just stop watching because now you know exactly what I think about it or you continue watching, find out exactly why I say these things in more detail and it does help out with the YouTube algorithm. This is an electric sight and the big difference between this and a normal scope is the fact that this has a camera lens in the front and you're looking into a screen opposed to looking through the scope itself, which is a little bit different at first and I, I had to be honest, uh, kind of throws you off at first when you're looking down this, but when you get used to it, is a really cool and unique system and it does have a lot of benefits. One of the biggest benefits and why I think a lot of people look into a scope like this is because it has night vision mode. You can shoot at nighttime. It comes with an IR device and it does come out with pretty much everything that you need to start shooting except a micro SD card, which is what you'll want to get if you want to record, which is a really cool feature as well as the fact that you can record what you are shooting. You can film and see exactly what you're shooting or you can film your hunting, which is a cool little feature and it films in 180p HD video. This has 18 hours of battery life and it comes with an app where you can change a bunch of settings. You can change your reticle shape, look, color, and you can download all your videos, your pictures, and it has something called a one shot zero, which we'll go over a little bit more detail and test that out. But it basically allows you to zero this in with minimal shooting, which is really cool, especially uh, if you're like me and I do not like zeroing all my guns. So that is a really cool feature that we test out later in this video. Now let's get into my relationship with ATN. They did send me this scope and this video is brought to you by them. Now that that is all out of the way, let's go over this scope from the back all the way to the front, going over all the little features, details, and all the things that comes with this scope. So the very first thing, you have this little rubber piece here that you can unscrew and screw back on. I highly recommend you keep this on because it does not allow any excess light to get in, especially because you're looking at a screen. So it's a little bit trippy, a little bit different, but with this, it doesn't allow all that light to be in there and you can really focus a lot better with this on. On there so it looks a little goofy i get that but realistically the whole thing looks a little different so it's not too big of a deal but i definitely recommend having that on there but if you don't like it you can just unscrew it take it off and you don't have to worry about it now moving up here to your focus ring you have two of these this is the very first one this is going to focus the actual reticle in the scope to your eye so depending who you are you should never really have to change this once you have it dialed in but if you give it to somebody else and allow them to shoot the gun they will probably want to dial it into their eye and you might have to move it back but if you are the only person that uses this, you'll never have to mess with this other than the first time you dial this in. Now moving forward to your mounting options. It comes with three different options to choose from. This is the one I chose that works the best for this system and probably what you're gonna wanna do if you put this on an AR platform. If you're using something different, you might wanna rotate things around. There is a different mount here that comes on here that has pick rails on the side and that is for mounting your IR device there on the side. I do not recommend, and ATN also does not recommend putting that up here because you're getting it farther away. If you put it up front, you're getting a better distance from your IR device. So that is why that is up front here. But if you're putting this on a bolt style gun that doesn't have anything up front to mount it, you can mount it up here to the actual scope itself. But if you have the AR style or the ability to mount it up front, I highly recommend putting it up there. We'll talk a little bit more about the IR device here in a second, but let's finish going over the scope. So on the sides here, you have a charging port. This is the USB-C. I'm glad that they went with that because that is the more updated uh, form of charging. So you should have those cables. And then here is where you put your micro SD card. You you will not have this come with the scope. You'll have to buy one yourself, uh, but they're not very expensive. You can get them on Amazon or really wherever else you shop. And uh, that way you are able to actually record what you are shooting. Uh, and that is such a cool feature. Let's just skip to that really quickly because I think it's so neat. Now, you don't have to have a micro SD to actually use this. If you don't wanna film, you don't wanna record, not a big deal, you can just use this. You don't have to do mess with that or even use it. Uh, but if you want to, you have to have a micro SD card. There is no internal storage on this. You're just gonna have to actually get the card Card, and then it will send it to the app and everything and you can use the app to download uh, your videos or you can just pull it from the card itself and put it into a computer. So the record feature is so neat because you were able to see exactly what the person behind the scope is doing. Uh, whether that be you wanna share your stories of your hunting where you show people exactly what you're doing or if you're just out looking at animals, which is something I did a lot when I first got this, I would go out at night and just look for deer and stuff and I thought that was pretty cool and you'll see a lot of B-roll of that. Or if you just wanna take some pictures or actually just show somebody what they're doing for a new shooter, you can watch them on the app and see what they're doing or you can videotape exactly what you want them to do and show them and they can see what they're supposed to be looking at through the screen. So now flipping this around to the other side, you have your zoom dial here. Now this is the one thing that I wasn't sure if I liked. If you watched my overview video, I was a little bit uh, iffy if I was gonna like it. And uh, my honest opinion is I really don't necessarily love this for a zoom feature. I like my zooms being up here. I think it's a little bit easier. I think it's a little bit 
laggy almost. I wish it would be a little bit more smooth. Hopefully that's something they look into the future, making your zoom a little bit more smooth, but that is how you move your zooming back and forth. Then right up top here, you have a D-pad and I like that they made it directional. So it's really easy to use. If you're behind the scope, you can just use it and move which direction you want to go and change things on the fly while you're shooting. Now you can change this directionally on the, the settings as well, or you can use the app. There are a ton of different settings that you can use on that app to change. I can't go through them all because honestly I don't remember them all I'd have to sit here and just look at a picture but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you b-roll here of me just scrolling through the app showing you every single setting that there is because I don't even think I've used all of them that's how many there are but there's a lot of things that you can change and really personalize uh, with a scope so you've got your left and right buttons here for your d-pad the right button will start your record and end your record and the left button will take a screenshot of what you're looking at so those are your film buttons and then your power buttons here up front you have a little microphone button here uh, it's not a button it's just a little uh, icon but that is where your microphone is and it surprised me it's not a phenomenal microphone where you're going to want to be doing like top tier recording with and and filming with but you are still able to hear what is going on you can hear animals you can hear noises you can hear um of my kids in the background a lot of these videos talking and playing but i think it's cool that it is there especially if you're filming hunting videos you can actually hear and see uh what you're looking at Moving up here to your second focus ring, and this one is actually gonna focus the image that you are looking at. So I'll show you some B-roll here of going back and forth. So if you're looking at a distance, you'll want to focus that to that farther distance. And if you want to focus on something that's a lot closer, you're then gonna wanna rotate that and focus it as well. It's pretty simple, pretty easy to use, uh, and it works very quickly. Now your front here is a sunshade. This is another part that you were able to unscrew and screw back on if you want to. So if you don't like sunshades or you don't want it to be this long, you can take that piece off and remove it. But I like the fact that they offer all this stuff. They have a lot of accessories that they won't add a bunch of extra costs saying, hey, you can have this, but you have to pay for more of it. It just comes in the box for those of you that are gonna want it. I again recommend throwing it on there because why not? Especially with it being a camera lens, depending what angle you're at, the sun can affect things a little bit. So it's just better to have that extra shade uh, for the front. So I did throw it on there. It does add a lot of length and that is somewhat of a downfall of this. Um, it's hard to say as a downfall because the people that are buying this aren't necessarily trying to go for lightweight and agile. This is usually something you put on a tripod or like I have here a bipod up front and you just lay down and you hunt with it. It's not necessarily something that you need speed or lightweightness. This isn't what you're going for. Um, so yes, it is large, but that's kind of what you know what you're getting into with something like this. Now moving up to the IR device, I wanna talk a little bit more about this. So when you get this, uh, the first thing I did was throw it on and I tried to look at nighttime and it was decent, but it wasn't great uh, until I actually adjusted this. So you can loosen the mount and you can adjust this and fine tune it to exactly the distance you want. So I went to about hundred yards and put it exactly in the middle of the uh, scope and where I was looking at hundred yards and everything was much more clear. So uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that you, um, not zero it, but technically zero your IR device to your scope so everything's aligned and meets where you want it to. There are better IR devices on the market and they also do offer a bigger one on their website that you can upgrade to. It's cool that they at least offer or give you one with a box so you can start using this uh, straight from when you buy it. Um, like I said, it's not the best one out there. You can definitely get higher quality ones and more brightness from them. But if you're your typical shooter, you're shooting 100 to 200 yards, this is gonna do everything that you're gonna want it to. So I highly recommend um, getting one playing around with it. And if you need something brighter, just buying a, a new one and getting something bigger, but see if this is gonna work for you before you go and buy anything better because you might be surprised with the output of this one. Now going into the app. So there's a ton of different things that you can do on this app, changing a bunch of different settings. Uh, but there's a couple things I really wanted to point out, a couple key features. One of them being the reticle. You can change your reticle shape, the look, the color. That way you can really personalize this to where you are, what you're shooting at, and how you like it. With the app, you can go through all your videos and pictures. You can download them straight to your phone, which I really like because it's just really easy to get the videos off of this straight to your phone and then download it so you can share them on social media or share them with people around that you know. It's just much more simple to use your cell phone opposed to uh, using the scope itself. You can do it both ways if you want to. If you want to just do it while you're behind the scope, you can dial it up, change your settings really quickly. But for me, I just found it easier to go through the app itself. Another cool feature with the app is something you can change around is your recoil activated video. Yeah. So and that is where you shoot the gun, the recoil activates the video 15, 20, 30 seconds before you shot. It'll film all the way up to that and then it'll film 15, 20, 30 seconds. You can change the timing and the settings of what you want it to be. So you can shoot uh, your gun, not have to worry about pressing the record button. It's gonna record before and after that shot. So you can get the perfect amount of film without having to have a bunch of wasted video that you have to go through and edit and, and have a ton of your space taken. So it's a really cool little feature that I messed around with and it does work very well. 
This has 18 hours of battery life. You can also get an external battery if that's not enough for you, depending on what kind of hunts you do. But for most of us and me, uh, 18 hours is plenty. Uh, I've used this a ton when I first got it, especially doing a lot of night vision stuff, recording and just testing the different things and going through all the settings and never had an issue with this turning off or having the battery die on me uh, midway through. I just came back, I threw it back on the charger and I was always good to go. The last feature I wanted to go over was the one shot zero. This is something I thought was really cool. When you shoot this to zero it in, you then take the D-pad and move the reticle where that shot was and then that will automatically zero that right where you want it. So I took us out to do that and see if it was only one shot or if it would be multiple shots. And I was able to get it down in one shot right into the bullseye. I did take a couple more shots to fine tune it exactly where I wanted it, but uh, it did only take me one shot to get it to the bullseye. And if you're like me, I absolutely hate zeroing guns and I usually shoot a lot more rounds than I think I probably should have to. Uh, so it was nice to be able to only have to shoot um, in total to get it exactly where I wanted. I think it was four shots. So it was one shot to get it right into the bullseye area and then it was like two more shots to get it exactly where I wanted it. Hopefully this video is able to help you make a better purchase decision, decide if this is something that you want and all the features work for you, or maybe you want to hold off and go with something else. There are some other scopes on ATN's website as well if this one isn't exactly what you're looking for. That is always my goal is to help you be able to spend your money in the best way possible. If you guys are looking to help out the channel and things I do here, there's a couple ways to do that down in the description. There are some discount codes from companies that I trust, and there's also a link to my website. A couple companies that support me and the things I do here. It's Howitzer and Brownells. Howitzer is a clothing brand that donates 5% of proceeds to charity, and I absolutely love their clothes. They make t-shirts, flannels, a ton of other things as well. And then Brownell supports me and I really appreciate them. And I could not do a lot of these builds without them. Other than that, guys, maybe I missed one of your questions. I do have an overview video going over a lot of details as well on the scope here if you'd like to look at. And I also have a POV, P POV, POV video um, of me looking through the scope at different things like animals, different scenery and different distances just to give you a really good idea what that looks like. And that is here as well if you'd like to look at that. Other than that guys, thank you so much and I appreciate you all.